So this is our introduction to our aqueous solutions topic. What I've just talked about in class is that we're only worrying about things that are dissolved in water. We're looking at, at closed systems, so if an equilibrium is involved it's a closed system, so that means that nothing escapes or gets added to it. If it was, if a condition was to change then Le Chatelier's principle comes in because it's a closed system, or it'll try to undo the changes I do to it. What we look at today is we look at what are solutions actually made up of? How can this be used to understand and explain their properties? For example, why is ammonium chloride acidic? Why is sodium ethanoate alkaline? Why is ethanoic acid an acid? That sort of thing. Why is a sugar solution, sucrose for example, neutral? Okay, so that's what we're going to go through. The key steps in our process of trying to understand this are, first of all, Sorry, wrong pen there. Um, first of all, we want to look at what's the dissolving process. So when we dissolve a solute in a solvent, when we put those two together, and the solvent in this case, because we're talking about aqueous solutions, is going to be water. And I'm purposely putting the subscripts in now because they become so important. So it's liquid water. When I do this dissolving process, how can I represent that as a chemical equation? So I'm going to show that as a chemical equation. Then my second step is, now I've got my solution, can anything in that solution react with water? Because there's water present, so can it react with water? And we call this hydrolysis usually, okay, where something's broken by the water molecule. So... Any species, we call them species in chemistry, any species in the solution, can it react with water? So can hydrolysis occur? If the answer is yes, then I have a second equation to write. So that's my thought process. One, how am I going to show the formation of the solution? Two, once that solution is formed, is anything else happening? If the answer is no, then I'm done. I'd might be working out solubility products, so how much is able to dissolve and how much stays undissolved or as a precipitate. Um, no, it means it's probably got a pH of 7, unless one of the ions, if it was ionic, one of the ions is hydroxide, for example. Okay, but then even that, that's going to have something to do with this, the where water auto hydrolyzes. Okay, so it's going to affect the hydronium ion concentration. So, if the answer is yes, however, and it does hydrolyze, then I need to start understanding things like Ka and Kb and Kw, so equilibrium constants, um, to look at working out things like the pH and that sort of thing. So that's our unit, sort of, in a nutshell. Okay. So I'm going to go through a couple of examples, some from our book on, which is Continuing Chemistry, on page 186, and some that I've just jotted down that are worth looking at. So the first one that we were given in our book was a 0.1 mole per litre calcium chloride solution. So I'm going to actually put some more significant figures there. So to make this, you would need to put 0.1 moles of calcium chloride solid into every litre of water that you are making up. Now I'm not going to worry about volumes here, that's how it would be made. How can I represent that as an equation? Well what I do is I start with the solid, calcium chloride, and you'll get to learn this as we do the topic more. This is a sparingly soluble salt, it's not actually highly soluble. So the bets are we'd end up using too much of this. So I'd actually have an equilibrium with H2O liquid on the top because it's a solution, aqueous solution, making calcium ions, which are now aqueous, and chloride ions, which are aqueous. Now, if it's a 0.1 mole per litre solution of this, that means that 0.1 moles for every litre of water were able to dissolve. Anything more that I put in there will sit on the bottom if I leave it long enough. Okay, actually sorry I'll retract that, anything more than that would make a saturated solution. 
So because this is below the solubility of calcium chloride, I can actually show it as an arrow in this case. But you will meet later in this topic things that are saturated solutions, and that's where you'll need to do an equilibrium. Saturated means I've put in as much solid as I can, then it started precipitating, and so I've waited for that to settle out and collected the solution off the top, and I have got as much dissolved in there as possible. Okay, and for that we have a thing called KS, or solubility product. Right, so here, because it's below its solubility, 0 0.1, I'm sorry, I'm going to get rid of my units, uh, sorry, my units, my significant figures here, 0 0.1 moles per litre of those dissolve. That means I've got 0 0.1 moles per litre of calcium ions because they're in a 1 to 1 ratio in the equation. And it means because these are in a 1 to 2 ratio, there's 0 0.2 moles per litre of chloride ions. Now it seems like we're making 0.3 moles per litre of stuff from 0.1. That's not quite how it works. If I think, look at how many atoms are in there, there's three in total. So I've got 0.1 moles per litre times three atoms or ions would be 0.3 moles per litre of things. I end up with 0.3 moles per litre of things. So that's okay. All right. So as long as my equation's balanced, then I can just use my mole ratios. 1 to 1 to 2 means 0.1 to 0.1 to 0.2. Works for moles per litre, it doesn't work for volumes necessarily. Just be aware of that. So, do these react with water? No, they don't. Okay, Calcium ions have become stable. They don't react further. Chloride ions are stable. They don't react further. Okay. The only way for these to, further, to react any other way would be electrolysis or some sort of redox. So that's it. I have described this. I could graph it, and in my graph I would have these two, and one of the bars would be half the size of the other bar with my scale. So I could do a bar graph to show the relative concentrations of these, and that's often a task that we're asked to do where we'd have our calcium ions and our chloride ions. That's 0 0.2, that's 0 0.1, and that's concentration in moles per litre. Okay? Right. So that's calcium chloride. A nice easy one where it's just a salt, a neutral salt, no change in pH, it stays at a pH of 7, that has fully dissolved. If I had too much of this, it would be in equilibrium because it wouldn't all dissolve and would have to work out how much it did. But that's where we're heading to with the next part of the unit. The next one that it asks about is sodium hydroxide. The sodium hydroxide is actually quite an easy one to do as well. And so I forgot to record the, I think it's just 0 0.01. Just like this one, we're going to have this dissolving, so we can show it really easily as NaOH. Making these two ions. If that's 0 0.01 moles per litre, that's 0 0.01 and that's 0 0.01. Now with the stuff that you learnt last year, you'd then be able to work out the pOH of this. Go 14 minus the pOH to give me the pH of the solution. So again, you could graph them, and these two bars would be the same height, both at 0 0.01. Um, as I say, you'd be able to use these numbers to predict that its pH would be 12. Okay. Um, and part of this unit, we will get to the point where you can tell me why that's got a pH of 12. Right. The next one in this is a lot more complicated and a really good case study for this sort of thing. So this one we're looking at... 0 point, uh, sorry, 1.0 moles per litre of ammonium chloride. The first step is dissolving. So, same thing again. Solid ammonium chloride making two ions, ammonium and chloride ions. <laughs> and those watching.
watching the video that went, ah, that was me tripping over a rubbish bin. <laughs> okay, in this case here, there's something else happening. Chloride ions do not react with water, but ammonium ions do. Ammonium is the conjugate acid of ammonia. Ammonia is a weak base. The conjugates of any weak acids or bases do hydrolyze. Say that again. The conjugates of weak acids and weak bases do hydrolyze. The common ones you'll meet are ammonium and ethanoate, or ethanoate, depending on how you want to say it. Ammonium will hydrolyze, so there's a bit more happening. This is one mole per litre being dissolved. So this is one mole per litre, and so is this. But this one here, some of it can hydrolyze. And you'll notice now water is not just sitting on top of the arrow, it's part of the reaction. It's a reaction with water, hydrolysis. You'll notice that this leads to an increase in hydronium ions. We don't know what it is yet, we don't know how much yet. But it's an increase in hydronium ions. This means that it's going to have acidic properties. So ammonium chloride is an acidic salt because once the salt has dissolved, the ammonium ion goes on to hydrolyze. Because this is a weak base, ammonia is a weak base, this is an equilibrium arrow. It's an equilibrium expression. So therefore this isn't going to rise by a lot, but it's going to be more than 10 to the negative 7 moles per litre now, so therefore its pH will be below 7, so acidic, because this has gone up. So you're going to need some information to be able to do that, but this will still be about 1.0 moles per litre. We disregard water because it just doesn't change, it's a constant, so it'll be on both sides of the equation in reality. So if it's going to be on the top and the bottom of any equilibrium expression, it would eliminate to 1. We don't know these two yet. But they'll be the same, and we can infer that because they're balanced, 1 to 1 ratio. So they're going to be the same, whatever they are, who knows, the only way we can find this is with some extra information that you would be given in a question like this, a thing called the Ka, the acid dissociation constant, and we'll learn about that in a later, un a la a later part of the unit too. The last one I want to talk about is one that throws people all the time. It's if I had something like 0 0.1 moles per litre of sucrose, which I'm going to quickly try to remember is C12H22O11. What's happening with that one? Well, actually, this one seems really hard, but sucrose is a molecule, and it has neither acidic nor alkaline properties. This is a bit like ethanol or anything like that that we did in organic chemistry, which is neither acidic nor alkaline, so it's neutral. What we see is it's actually even easier than these ones. It's simply this. If I start with sucrose, and if I've got the wrong formula, I do apologise in advance, and I dissolve it in water, it's this simple. <laughs> I've made an aqueous solution of it. That's it. Nothing else. All right? So, when I have a solution, an aqueous solution being made of a molecular substance, ethanol, sucrose, glucose, any of those sorts of things, where hydrolysis isn't happening either, then all you're doing is going from solid to aqueous. All right. So let's go through those very quickly as a summary. One, neutral salts just dissolve. Be careful, if they're not in a one-to-one -one ratio of everything, then the concentration needs to be carefully looked at by looking at the numbers in front of the ions or species on the product side. If I have something that's got, sorry, if I've got a strong acid or a strong base, then its concentration becomes the concentration of one of those ions, and I can use that to predict its pH. 
Okay, if it's a base, you need to find the POH, subtract that from 14. If I've got a salt made, sorry, if I've got a salt that contains the conjugate of a weak acid or a weak base, it doesn't just dissolve, it hydrolyzes as well. And I'm going to need a thing called Ka to work out what concentration these things are in, and ultimately probably the pH. And if I've got something that is a molecular solid or a mole molecular gas that does not react with water, like sucrose, like ethanol, like methanol, then all I'm doing is going from the solid or gas, if it was something like O2, to the aqueous, and that's all. All right. You may be asked to represent those on a graph like this, where you're just sketching the values to show that you understand the relative concentrations of the species in solution. The last thing I want to throw in there before I say that is these are aqueous solutions. So that means, I'm going to do this in green so it's just the neutral part of it. That means that unless their concentrations are changed by OH being produced or H3O plus being produced, then you've also got hydroxide and hydronium ions present at 10 to the negative 7 moles per litre, always, because that's the amount that water hydrolyzes itself. 10 to the negative 7. Now you notice that magical number 7. I've done it in green for a really good reason. 7 is neutral on a pH scale, because 7 is negative log of that number there. So these two have to be at a concentration of 10 to the negative 7 moles per litre if the solution is neutral. That one's neutral, that one's not, that one's not, and that one is. So if I was to draw those on a graph, there'd be a little line at the bottom on our graph, just a line for those two ions at 10 to the negative 7 moles per litre. So you couldn't show it very well on this. It's, a, it's 10 million, sorry, it's a million times smaller than this. A million times smaller than that. It's a lot smaller. 